Hello there, welcome back to the physics colony and now we are gonna cover up something which is so damn important. We are gonna derive the easiest way of derivation of E equals MC square. The best formula of mankind and so so much useful. So I'm not wasting much of your time. Let us simply start deriving this equation. First, uh, let us before deriving, I must tell you that to derive this equation, we have to consider a situation a photon and a cardboard. Sorry, photon and a cardboard. So, shall we start with the assuming? Let us come on. So what do you see in this diagram that I must say that this is the box. This is the box of length L and this is the photon. No need of this arrow. Actually this arrow is, indica is to indicate that it's a photon. But here the photon is in moving from the initial position of the box to the final position of the box. So. First, let us take in uh, take in condition this thing that the photon is on the very very first side of the box, very uh, opposite side of the box, and going towards the other opposite side. So, what do we observe here? So, I hope you understood what are the actual conditions which we assumed, and the very important condition is it's in vacuum. The outside, the outside condition is totally vacuum and in a vacuum or we can say in space there is a box inside the box there is photon. Now let's write some important equations now. So what are important equations? For let, first let us write the momentum. Momentum for photon according to the Max Planck we can say according to Maxwell sorry. According to Maxwell, we can say that momentum of photon equals to E divided by C. And let us calculate the momentum of box 2. Momentum of box equals to M times V there. Oops. I'm sorry. Capital M equals to box mass. So capital M equals to box mass. Now we we know now what are the actual momentums of these two box. So our next step would be something like this. What do you see in this diagram is what you see of course that is the the photon has reached the other side of the wall or the other side of the box here traveling the length L and what do we see is the box is reconciled backwards since the photon goes from this position to this position according to the Newton's third law uh, a box got the opposite reaction of that photon due to its release from here and collision in here so box reconcile from this position to this position whose length is delta L this is the very important part I hope you understand this since photon that is the light particle from this position went here to this position traveling the length L the box reconciled and went backwards to balance now what do we have to do is the main condition which will look right now we would balance the momentum of the photon and the box. So balancing the momentum we get now, let us see, the momentum for box equals to the momentum of photon. I hope you are understanding now, let us see what is momentum of box. We know the momentum of box is m times v. 
equals to E divided by C. Since I told you the momentum of photon equals to E upon C, what is V? Velocity displacement upon time, so equals to M times dx upon dt, where dx is the reconciliation thing, you saw it right here. This is the value of dx, oh, it's dl, so let's take a dl, no issue. M times dl upon dt equals to E upon C, sorry for that cutting, so let's do it again. M times dl upon dt equals to E divided by C. This is nothing but the balancing of the actual, we can say, momentums. Where dt is the time taken for box to reach from to travel the distance dl. And same would be the time. Now let's me write dt equals to time taken by box to travel distance dl and also time taken by photon so i hope you understood the delta t or we can say dt is the time taken to box for travel the distance delta l and also time taken by photon to reach opposite side so this is nothing but the theory theoretical part now let's again get towards the equations again those equations i'm very much scared of so now what does our first equation says now what did we say now m times dl upon dt equals to e upon c now if you can see this again this thing then the photon travels the distance of l in the time dt so according to velocity equals to displacement upon time we can say time which is delta t we can say right here delta t equals to displacement divided by velocity our important equation for the photon particle now substitute this dt in this okay let this be dt delta t everything is equal so substitute this in this we can say m times dl equals to e times l upon c square again one of the most important equations that we got that is m times dl equals to e times l upon c square now the next thing we did is we calculated the center of mass you can see here in this position first in this position let us calculate the center of mass of photon as well as the box now for the photon Einstein what did it say now let's see Einstein assumed the mass a photon as small m this was just the thing that Einstein assumed since photon is also a wave and also a particle so Einstein assumed the mass of photon as m and now let us calculate the center of mass now let's calculate the center of mass that is at first the mass of box that is m times x1 let x1 be any position of the box and now plus mass of photon into any x2 x2 is the position of photon upon m1 plus m2 that is mass of box plus mass of photon now since the center of mass now let me write here center of mass is maintained so you can see here I have written center of mass is maintained since the photon goes from initial position to final position everything is same so center of mass is maintained because it goes from exactly negative to positive position and since photon so now let's maintain or let's balance the center of mass 
which is equal to now you can see again in this diagram that is what the cube or the box is preceding or is going back by the length of delta l all right so what would be the final length that is m1 times x1 minus delta l plus now again we can write m times x2 no 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 not x2 we can write since the photon now you can see since the photon went from this position to this position it just traveled the length of l so we can see m times x1 plus delta x1 plus m times l so that is x2 upon or no not x2 some other length which is l upon simply m plus m since mass is always the same now what would we do is nothing but equating all these things now what do we get that is m times x1 plus m times x2 equals to m times x1 minus delta l times m plus m l now we get this equation now again as usual we can just cut all the things we want that is m times x1 and m times x1 and what the very important conclusion is since the photon started from its initial position we can take x2 as 0 we can take x2 as totally 0 since we measured from the actual position of the photon so x2 is 0 so gets cut now what the very important conclusion that we got right here is m times l equals to oh sorry it's small m alright small m oops okay i'll write it again now well, listen to me small times m that is mass of photon into l that is length of box equals to mass of the box into delta l m times delta l equals to mass of photon into l now do you have any idea what does this mean in just few couple of minutes ago i told you this equation m times dl equals to el upon c square m times dl what do we have here m times dl so substitute m l equals to well, m times dl equals to el upon c square ll gets cut and what do we get right now m equals to e upon c square the best equation of physics i would not write this thing as e equals to mc square because Einstein actually said that mass is directly proportional to energy or we can say that mass equals to energy per unit speed of light the whole square which we can also write as E equals to mc square which looks way more cooler than this but Einstein discovered the actual formula as m equals to E upon c square and we made it as E equals to mc square that is energy equals to mass into speed of light the whole square so that's how we draw this equation thank you for watching guys this was the most important formula of mankind and in my next video i would discuss the importance of this equation so guys as usual thanks for watching and do like and subscribe my channel i know if you really think this thing was much important you just learned something right now then thank you very much it was totally my pleasure and if you really liked it, then please do like and press that subscribe button because I want your support. So guys, see you later. Guys, thank you for giving me the chance. Thank you. And of course, do like and subscribe if you like. If you like this video and if you don't, then please do comment how should I change my teaching style to make it more interactive. So thank you guys. See you soon. Goodbye.